G'day folks, had a few issues with the bell siphon today, so I thought I'd bring you along and show you how I'm going to fix it. Now this one here uh, was set up using a uniseal, and uniseals are great and fantastic. Uh, the only problem is that um, I move and bump this um, drain pipe that runs into the sump tank a fair bit, and what that's meant is it's um, split the uniseal. I've also got a little bit of metal under there, I don't know if you can make it out, and that's rubbing right up against the uniseal and I've cracked it. So it's my own fault for um, not taking it easy. Uni seals really aren't meant for positions where the pipe gets a lot of movement. Um, so, you know, they're, they're great for a drain pipe like off the fish tank or off a filter that doesn't have a lot of movement. But something like this, where I'm um, constantly putting a top-up hose in here and moving this around, I've basically, yeah, done the uni seal in. So what I thought I'd do is just show you how I'm going to change that out. So what I'm basically going to be doing is trying to get down through all that clay there uh, to remove the uni seal and replace it with this little bulkhead fitting. I actually had to um, pill for the washers for these, this little fitting um, from the barrel beds over the back there because I can't find any other washers. So they're offline. So I just grabbed one out of the bell siphon over there. Um, so yeah, now uh, I need to get down to the base of this little jobby here so I can replace everything. So, what we need to do is remove all this clay. Um, one of the easiest things to do is to um, just move some of it to one side. I mean, if the bed was half empty, it'd be easy. All I'd have to do is just push the clay around different parts of the bed. Um, but yeah, I've got a few plants in here at the moment. Let's try to push back as much as I can. I've got about, oh, just over half of it, I think, out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is use this flower pot with no hole in it. I have tried to use a square bucket, but with these flower pots, because they're circular, you can sort of twist them backwards and forwards. And it's a lot easier to get them down to the base of the bed. I was going to use a square one, and then I remembered it's, it's just a lot easier to twist these things in. So now we'll just move as much as we can around the outside. Get it down a bit further and the rest of this clay can come out and just into a bucket so what this will mean is i'll have direct access to the base of the bed and there'll be no clay getting in the way of um, removing the old uni seal and putting in the new bulkhead fitting so i'll just finish cleaning this out and then we'll bring you back in for a bit of a gander so i'm just going to take this drain fitting off the base here oh it's on there pretty tight and i'm going to try and push this pipe through We'll see if it'll um, it'll pull out up this way. So sorry if I bump the camera. We're just working. Uh, give a tight space here and take the guard off. That'll help. I think I'm going to have to pull the pipe up this way. There we go. So there we go. The rest of this clay I can just push out down through there, just into a bucket below. There we go. Now you might be able to make out that black shadow there, dark shadow. Uh, that's um, from a rod that's helping to keep the base of the grow bed up. So I'm going to move that because it will interfere with the bulkhead fitting I want to pop in. So pretty easy to do that. Just need to slide it across. So now we can install the bulkhead fitting and also set up the, um, the shroud that goes around the bell siphon. Um, if you want to learn how to make bell siphons, I've actually made a clip on that already that covers the complete build. You can check it out up there. Um, but what I like to do, just to give you a quick little introduction, I like to have a, um, an end cap with some holes drilled in it that match up with the holes on the shroud, just on the base, just to lock it in place. Mainly because when I first started out, I did have a few people uh, grab the, the tops of these, give them a bit of a wiggle, and if there's no base there, it moves it to one side and I ended up with clay getting into the bell siphons and all sorts of stuff. So I like to have these little plates here. Now, what that does mean, though, is I do need to have an extra washer I found. So that's why I pulled um, the, <laughs> the other uh, bulkhead fitting out of the old barrel bed. What I like to do is I like to have it underneath this cap here that sits on the base of the bed. If we can get it to sit straight. And then... What I like to do is have the bulkhead fitting go through that. And then on the underside, I like to add another washer on the locking nut. So it's as easy as just threading it on like this. I might actually just pull this rod out. Now having that rod in there has actually deformed the base of the bed a bit, but it's not too much to worry about. 
Now I'm just going to grab my um, pliers and we'll give this a little bit of a tighten up. I think that's just about it. And we're almost done. Doesn't look like we've got any drips coming through there and there's a fair little bit of um, water accumulating down the bottom. I'm just going to thread on the, um, the standpipe, pop it in. It actually doesn't have to be watertight um, because any leaks are going to go straight through into the, uh, the sump. So I just finger tight on that and then the guard goes back on. So I'm just going to pop the bell in and the end cap. That's the lid and then we'll put the drain work on down below. So now I'm just going to wrap some Teflon tape around this thread here. Try and get it sitting nice and flat. And this will just um, create a bit of a watertight seal between the drain and the thread here. And we thread on this, which is just a uh, one inch or 25 mil threaded elbow. Thread on one side and the other side is a just the push fitting. That looks to be all right. So what I'm doing here is just wrapping a little bit of the Teflon tape around the end of this drain fitting. And what that will do is help create a uh, watertight seal between it and the, um, the elbow there. And just to let you know, I like to wrap a little bit of the tape over the edge there. It just helps it to um, not pull back when you pop it into the uh, fitting. So we'll just push that in. There we go. So I can turn this valve on now into the grow bed. It's a little bit faster than it normally would be. And that'll fill up. We'll be able to see if we've got any leaks down the bottom here. I don't think we will have. So there's nothing coming down yet. So we'll let it run through a couple of um, cycles and then we'll put the clay in. Because the last thing I want to have to do is um, <laughs> dig all that clay out again. So I've just zip tied the, the drain down a little bit, um, just to give it a little bit of a downward run towards the sump tank. And I did have to um, tighten up the bulkhead fitting here. So there was a little bit of a leak, but you know, nothing a couple of spanners couldn't fix. So I'll just dump all that down there around the bell siphon. All I have to do is pull this out, make sure that shroud's on nice and tight and then move all the clay back down. And it's pretty much all as easy as that. So I'd say all up, uh, even though I had a bit of an interruption in the middle, it took me, I'd say probably only about half an hour to do that. Uh, uh, using a little round um, guard like that, the flower pot is a lot better than using something that's square, just because you can actually work it backwards and forwards and sort of cut down through the media. Uh, with rock, it would be different because it doesn't tend to move as well as the spherical clay. Also too, if you are using rock, like the um, basalt we get here, the blue metal, you can push it to one side and it doesn't tend to fall down as much. Again, because it's not that spherical shape. So there you go. Um, yeah, so about half an hour, I did have to um, nip next door with Bianca just to discuss a rental property with some folks while we're uh, renovating the house. So thank you very much, folks. Um, looks like we've secured somewhere. But anyway, a bit of a look at the system. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did post a clip about looking after the system with no fish in it. And just to show you that uh, we have been adding in the um, urea and also the fish emulsion. And you can see just by these beetroot that they are starting to bounce back. Uh, even this um, chard over the back there, you can see the darker green leaves in the center. So I'm pretty confident that these plants are all going to bounce back. Uh, we've even got some nice little heads forming on the broccoli here. Uh, a couple of holes in there from the cabbage butterflies as well. This head over the back is actually a little bit larger. The best plant to actually see the change in the, uh, the nutrient uptake would be this chard here. You can see the chlorosis uh, on those leaves, but the new leaves are looking very nice and green indeed. So I'm, I'm pretty um, confident that we have, oh, and even this plant down here, the new leaves are a lot greener than the others. So I am pretty confident that the, um, the nutrients are coming through the fish emulsion and making their way to the plants. I couldn't finish the clip without showing you the deep water culture tomato. As you can see, there's a couple of flowers on there. So as soon as we find out what sort of a um, fruiting plant she is, whether she's a yellow cherry or a red cherry, or maybe even a KY1, I'll make a decision as to whether to keep her or just compost her. Um, I'm pretty much all only interested if she's a KY1, we'll keep her then, because we have the yellow and the red cherries popping up as volunteers everywhere. So I was just editing the clip and I realized that I had lost the footage showing you the uniseal. So this is it here. This is the uniseal that was sitting underneath that bell siphon. 
and the reason it cracked is this top up hose I was using that drain pipe to pin that down and that's caused this crack just too much movement these guys here are fantastic in positions like on our fish tank up there and also down on the filter where you've got pipe coming through it just sits there there's no movement whatsoever unless you're working on the system and moving the pipes around and they do a fantastic job don't leak at all when you're talking about um, the differences in prices a large two inch uni seal is under ten dollars you try finding a uh, 50 millimeter or two inch um, bulkhead fitting for under ten dollars very hard to do but yeah, definitely not something I would recommend um, putting in a position like here, where I move that pipe all the time. But I just thought I'd, um, yeah, I couldn't have finished the clip without showing you the cracked uni seal. Just so I'll give you a bit of a heads up on the clip that I'll be posting hopefully by next weekend. It's I'm um, answering a question um, Pat um, asked me on an old radial flow filter clip. He was just, um, he's getting ready to set up his aquaponics system and he um, asked for suggestions on how, you know, I'd go about setting up a floating raft bed. Uh, media bed and what sort of filters and fish tanks and that sort of thing so what I've decided to do is actually draw up a bit of a design for him um, just to give him a bit of a look at how I'd lay out the system and I thought I'd post it to YouTube as a clip so that um, um, aquaponics clip hopefully will be out next weekend and it might interest a few of you folks who are just getting into aquaponics for the first time or you know some of you other folks who uh, would like to see how I'd actually design a system I'm sure there'll be a few critics out there, but also a few people that'll help out as well. Uh, just for you folks who do want to uh, have a look at some of the aquaponic clips I've done in the past, if you're not familiar with them, I'll leave a playlist up there looking at um, how to build a, a couple of basic systems and some components that might help you um, get started. There will be more clips added to that playlist and others uh, down the track looking at aquaponic design for the backyard, not commercial, and um, different components you can make yourself. I'm actually looking at doing up a couple of other clips explaining what a radial flow settler is and the difference between it and a swirl filter, and also the uh, bio moving bed biofilters or the bioreactors that we use in the system here and yeah, some other folks use if they're just using NFT, nutrient film technique or deep water culture bed so those clips will be added to that playlist as well thought i'd get a little bit up close and personal folks just to thank you all for coming along and watching our clips and supporting the channel um, even if it's just a thumbs up or a comment down below i really do appreciate it feel free to share them as well if you think the clips would help some of your family and friends out uh, before I go, I really do need to thank those marvellous folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support, folks. As always, you can find the links to the Super Contributors website and Facebook pages down in the description below. It would be fantastic if you could go and check out what they're about and um, show them some love. I'd really appreciate it. So I will leave it there, folks. I do hope your aquaponic systems and your gardens are booming, and I will catch you all next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.